During these next few months of October and November, our entire church is invited to enter a new season of discussion and commitment towards the goal of becoming more totally devoted as a disciple of Jesus Christ. We are committing to God. We're committing to this church. We're committing to discipleship. So together we're going to explore what it fully means, what that full commitment is to be a discipleship by climbing higher or taking those steps in our prayer life, our Bible reading, in worship, and service, and in witness. And then in that final week in November, we'll be committing on growing in our financial giving, what is traditionally known as that Stewardship Sunday. But I need you to know that each step we take in these weeks is equal of equal importance, although we often as a church put greater emphasis on that financial Sunday. Each week is important as we commit ourselves to being disciples of Jesus Christ. Yes, we do need that financial resource to keep our lights on, the air conditioning going, the heat going, programs running, staff in place, we need to maintain our facilities. But we each need to be active in those other steps in the church. Each of these six steps is of equal importance. I can't emphasize that enough. Our doors are open each Sunday thanks to the financial support that built this church and maintains it. But if we aren't people here worshiping together, our discipleship falls short. Without that commitment of Bible reading, our lifelong journey of faith development remains stagnant. We miss that invitation to put those words into action. Being committed disciples of Jesus Christ that includes witness and service. Without the, the commitment to witness our faith, our faith is kept secret. And we never invite others to join in us, in with us on this journey with Jesus Christ. Without service as disciples, the teachings of Jesus Christ to serve all the others, they're never carried out. The kingdom of God here on earth is never realized if we don't have those, those acts of service. Last week, we committed to that intentional relationship with God when we filled out our, our disciple commitment card. Today, we focus on what is perhaps the most important stage of our discipleship. It's when we engage in a relationship with God through prayer. If we're going to have a personal relationship with God, it's going to begin with prayer. Now, for many of us, I have a feeling our prayer life began as a small child when we were taught those familiar words. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Amazing, I googled that last night. That, that prayer was first written in a British magazine in 1711. Imagine the generations that have been taught that prayer and recited it at night. Then there's also the other familiar, familiar one we were taught as children. God is great, God is good. You guys know my version. That's another one I googled and there's like two or three different ones that you can do. But then as we grew older, our prayer life more or less followed a lot of the experiences in our life. About the age of 10, I can remember laying in bed and just praying to God to remove any cavities that were in my mouth because I had to go to the dentist. <laughs> Anyone else do that one? I just prayed, if there's anything there, just take it away, God, I'll do anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And of course, uh, that prayer was not answered as drilling began, and now crowns and root canals and all of that. I can remember praying when a pet became sick or injured. I remember especially praying and singing over the graveside of one of my cats, buried under the lilac tree in the backyard. Like most students, I can remember especially praying in middle school and high school for tests. Just let me get through this one and I'll study in advance next time. <laughs> but then as we grew, our prayers changed when there were decisions to be made. 
I prayed for guidance of where I should go to college, or what I should even do, nurse, teacher. I prayed for guidance when I moved to California all by myself and got on there, that airplane with one suitcase. I prayed when I accepted a teaching position that kept me here. I remember about that same time praying that God would send me that special person who I'd said to spend my life with. At 27, I was getting to that point of I needed that special person. <laughs> the prayer was answered. <laughs> I prayed when it became time for us to be in our family. I prayed with each pregnancy. I prayed when the ultrasound showed that healthy baby. And I prayed when the ultrasound showed what we didn't want to accept. As parents, I prayed for my children frequently. I prayed for the decisions they make, both ours at home and away at college. God and I spent a great deal of time praying when I received my calling because that changed the direction of my life and my family's. I prayed immediately when I hung up after talking to our district superintendent and he told me about this appointment from Ramona. Like most of you, I come to God in prayer when I have those important decisions to make in life. The scripture that we heard this morning from the Gospel of Luke tells of a time when Jesus went up on that mountain because he had a crucial decision. The significance of the scene that we heard about is that it's set on a mountain and the report that Jesus spent the entire night in prayer. The only other time that Jesus goes up to the mountain to pray is just before the transfiguration when he began that journey to Jerusalem. We know that prayer is a regular practice of Jesus by the account of Luke. Luke references prayer in connection with significant turning events in, in, in Jesus' life, like when the Spirit came upon Jesus, Peter's confession that Jesus was the Messiah, the Lord prayer, and at the end in the garden. Luke recognizes the significance of that night of prayer on top of the mountain. Jesus knew he had a very important decision to make, and he didn't want to make it without the guidance of his Heavenly Father. The aim of his entire ministry was the restoration of Israel, and his decision that night was on the twelve to be chosen as apostles. The Gospel writer viewed that these twelve were distinct from the larger group of disciples. These were the twelve that would restore God's people. Now one question that's often asked when we hear of Jesus praying to God is, why did he pray so much and lie to God? When we describe the Trinity, we talk about the Father and the Son being one. So sometimes people ask, why did Jesus have to talk to God? Didn't they already communicate? Weren't they one? Some suggest that Jesus really didn't need to pray, given his mind was in direct line with God's. But perhaps by doing so, he was modeling faithful leadership for those 12 disciples and for the many who would come after. This Christological question is an interesting one, and we could probably spend from here till Christmas discussing it and studying it and debating it. We probably would never come to a consensus on that, but what is important in the scripture today is the importance of prayer. What is important is becoming a better steward of our resources that God gives us. Prayer is important because it allows us to grow in our relationship with God. Healthy relationships have excellent patterns of communication, and prayer is how we communicate to God. Prayer is not only about talking to God and telling Him our wants and needs. Prayer is also about listening when God speaks to us. I wrote that yesterday, and that's been on my mind. We also have to take the time 
to listen to God when we're sharing with Him. The more essential that prayer becomes in our lives, the more we're able, we're able to learn to listen to the ways that God is speaking to us. Listening opens up our lives to be molded and shaped by God's will, not just ours. We're invited to think seriously and set goals for growth in our prayer lives. God desires to be in relationship with us through prayer. The habit of daily prayer reminds us not only of our relationship with God, but it also becomes that open channel to receive encouragement, to receive comfort, to receive direction. As we begin our spiritual life with God, and as we serve in Jesus' name. John Wesley, in a sermon entitled The Scriptural Way of Life, he spoke about the word of growing and maturing as a disciple of Jesus Christ. He spoke of that work and how it has two parts, the works of piety and the works of mercy. Works of piety are those activities that touch our lives and our hearts. It builds upon faith and our trust in God. These works include worshiping, receiving the Lord's Supper, praying publicly, praying with our family, praying, praying alone. Works of mercy include those things that touch the hearts of others. They build their faith. These works include giving food and clothing to the poor, welcoming the stranger, strengthening the faith of those, those that are filled with doubt and worry, the way of saving their soul. Wesley suggested that the first steps of commitment to growing a prayer life is the variety of commitments that faithful disciples make when they strive to grow and mature as a disciple of Jesus Christ. These commitments occur throughout our whole lifetime journey. These commitments occur when we make that promise in our prayer life. This week we received another commitment card, week one in prayer, and the commitment card asks the question, are you ready to grow in your prayer life? There's responses, just like last week, and these responses are geared to both the new believer as well as those who are mature in their discipleship. The responses focus on the frequency of prayer, which in part is part of the quality of a prayer life. Some today might be ready to make a commitment, while others are still growing in their commitment in prayer. Pull out your card as we read through the responses today. Our responses today are, today I'm not ready to make that commitment to pray. Beginning today, I will pray when I am in a worship service. These two steps might seem very simple, but these steps are necessary. These steps in prayer introduce a journey towards trusting God in our life, our family, our relationships, our job, our finances, our immediate future, and our eternal future. The next responses are, Beginning today, I will pray every time I face a difficult decision. Beginning today, I will pray daily. Some may find this level of commitment a challenge. I invite you to consider making the holy habit of prayer at a set time each day, perhaps when you rise, maybe when you brush your teeth, maybe when you're driving throughout your day, maybe in the evening, or perhaps, as the children said, we were sharing a meal together. Our next response is, beginning today, I will pray daily using a devotional guide. Devotional guides are available in bookstores, on the internet. The upper room is one guide that comes to mind, and we've had a request, as a church, can we begin to receive the upper room and that important discipleship? went online and we're looking at that and we'll, we'll find a way to get the upper room going again. Our next response is, beginning today I will pray daily, remembering the prayer request shared in worship. 
Beginning today, I will pray daily using the weekly prayer list from the bulletin. Beginning today, I will pray daily setting aside 15 minutes for daily devotional time. Beginning today, I will pray daily and be in the church, be in the church prayer chain and prayer group. We have that prayer group. Pretty simple. It comes in the same email. You read it and you say the prayer. If you'd like to be in that group and you're not, CJD, there we go. Mm-hmm. He'll make sure you get on that prayer group, our email prayer group. And lastly, prayer will be a priority in my life, growing to include the following. I will surround my family and friends with prayer. I will surround my church with prayer. Through prayer, I will find strength, power, and direction to face the week. Through prayer, I will trust God with my life, my family, my job, my finances, and my immediate and eternal future. Through prayer, I will learn to live to love God with all my heart and to love my neighbors. May we be guided by the Holy Spirit as we make our commitment in prayer life. I invite you once again to fill out your commitment card on prayer. Check the boxes that apply. There may be one. There may be more. There's also space for your name. Once again, that's your decision if you'd like your name on it. They will go in the chest. The chest will go on the altar. And from there, I'm putting them in sealed envelopes for privacy. I ask that you now hold on to your card. We're not going to put them in the chest yet. During the offering today, we have very special music with Dale. We have the clarinet clarinet music. During that song, I ask you to reflect on your responses. And then we'll place these cards in our commitment box during the last song. May God be with us as we make our commitment to grow in our prayer life. Amen.